Hey, what's happening, my brothers and sisters? Uh, just got done uh, doing my six-hour meditation, about approximately six hours. And I needed to uh, just come on here and talk about it while it's still fresh in my mind, while there's still the, some kind of residual effects happening. And just to ground myself, too, because I've never felt like this before in my life. Um, that was the longest I've probably ever meditated in my life. And I feel absolutely, uh, I feel amazing. I feel great. I feel, I don't know. I've never felt like this before in my life. It's hard to explain. <sighs> Slightly, I feel like I'm under some, some substance. I feel high. I feel amazing, man. Very, that was the toughest experience that I've ever put myself through, I'm pretty sure. The toughest, the hardest, simplest thing that I've ever done. Um, I didn't do it for bragging rights either. And I obviously know nobody's going to sit through a six-hour video of some guy just sitting there and breathing. Um, I did it just to prove to everybody that it's possible. Because if you didn't, like, you know, I mean, how else do you prove that you can take control of your mind in ways such as that than literally live streaming it, right? And if I can do it, you can do it. And I highly recommend everybody try, you don't have to do six hours, <laughs> try uh, maybe an hour, half an hour if you can. And I, you'll thank yourself afterwards, man. It's just so transformative. I just, I, like I said, I've never felt like this before in my life. Sober. I've never felt like this, man. It was an absolutely insane experience. I don't know, I wasn't keeping track of time, obviously, but it didn't seem like six hours. But there was one point there was one point where maybe about halfway through I was I was thinking about not not I mean, no just giving up I guess giving up or you know I wouldn't even be giving up three hour meditation is still crazy but just kind of just stopping because there was something in me said yeah I want you you know why don't you go get a snack why don't you go walk around you've been doing this long enough there was some voice in my head that was just come on yeah, you're, you're good. You don't need to do this anymore. What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? And I didn't listen to that voice. There was something in me that connected at a deeper level that enabled me to disconnect from that voice. And throughout the practice, it seems like I was able to disconnect from that voice through um, two more meditation. You know, like the Wim Hof breathing, Breath of Fire. You'll see if you go and check, you know, some parts in the video, I go and do um, some breath of fire technique or, you know, some Tumo, Kundalini, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's all just like kind of like a hyperventilation technique to ground yourself, to bring yourself to, I don't know. It, it enabled me whenever I did that, if you, if you do, if anybody cares and goes to check it out and sees me doing those crazy breathing exercises, it, um, <clears throat> It enabled me to turn off that, I don't know if it was the monkey mind you want to call it, but that voice that told me I couldn't. The voice that told me to just stop, just give up, you know, go watch a YouTube video, go grab a snack, go chill out, go lay down. You don't need to do this. There was power in doing the breathing. It enabled me to turn off that voice and it enabled me to turn off any pain too. Because I, I was experiencing a lot of neck pain. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and, and you know, uh, obviously back pain too. Because sitting like that is pretty tough, even with a back to the chair. So, if it wasn't for the, the, the breathing exercise like that, um, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have been able to go that long. So, there's something to it. 
I'm not saying you would have to do that if you want to try and go six hours or eight hours or 12 hours or whatever. But for me personally, uh, you know, just putting it out there, I, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been possible. Um, yeah, man, it really taught me. I mean, I'm still processing everything that just happened. I really there's no words for where my mind went. My mind went all over the place and I just I, I was just the witness. Everything, everything that popped up, whether it was, you know, hunger, whether it was having to pee. I had to pee the whole time, man, pretty much for, for like four hours. I was holding that in. Whether it was some kind of sexual fantasy, whether it was, um, you know, something about money, some kind of drama, anything, whatever popped up, love. I was just bearing witness and I learned it taught me a valuable lesson to just be able to bear witness if I can bear witness there throughout you know four hours five hours six hours of meditation and just keep going and keep being the witness and keep returning to the witness then I can do that anywhere the biggest lesson that I got from that was you can always return to the stillness we can always return to that, to that, just kind of, um, you know, like I said, just witnessing, just simply experiencing, just becoming aware. We can always return to that. That's always there for us. And how you get to that point, that's up to you. I would suggest the breath. I would suggest, you know, becoming aware of the breath. That's a good start. But just know that peace and stillness is always there for you, no matter what. Peace and stillness is always there. If you're in this human body, it's always there. It might not seem like it. It might not seem like it. My mind was so... I might look at peace in the video, but my mind was not at peace. It was actually... I was actually having some anxiety. I was... Um, physically, physically, uh, not feeling so well from sitting, you know, try and sit in the same position for about six hours. You're not going to, you're not going to feel the greatest. And even just had some uncomfortable things that I didn't necessarily want to think about at the, that point. But I still stayed steadfast in, in the practice. And I think that's what's important. That's the biggest lesson that you can get from you know, a long-term meditation is that it trains our our brain, rewires our brain to be able to just dwell in the moment and simply just become aware of this crazy mind. We have so much going through our mind all at once. Oh my God, it was like a movie. It was like this, it was like I watched 20 movies during that meditation craziness man it's craziness our mind is so not under our control it's crazy man I highly suggest everybody do it the, also one of the biggest points that I got from that is always temporary there was something in me that said there was something in me always. When I wanted to give up, when I wanted to just say, oh, I switched my hand. <laughs> there was something in me that just said, look, man, your back might hurt. You might have to take a piss. Um, you might want to go do something else. You know, you might want to go on Reddit or YouTube or, you know, whatever. You might want to go do that. But maybe later. You can go do that later. Right now, it's all all is temporary. All is temporary. All of it, man. I went through some kind of like, damn, man. Like, my mind went to some crazy places, bro. My mind went to some crazy places. And I can't even explain it. It was a, it was a psychedelic experience, man. 
I can't even explain it, man. Like when I came to that fact, like there was one point, all was temporary, it was just pulsating throughout my body, like this more than just the thought, the feeling of my temporary nature, of the temporary nature of everything, of all of this. And I really, really internalized that. And it made me a little uncomfortable. It's probably physically noticeable in the video. I don't remember when it was, <laughs> but most likely um, there was a point in there where you'll notice that I, it was like there was something I was feeling uncomfortable and gave me some a sense of anxiety, but I stayed with it. And I knew, <laughs> this is the crazy thing, I knew that even that, that, that feeling of the, of, that was from the temporary nature and internalizing that, that feeling, that anxiety, I knew that was temporary itself. So from there, I just kind of let it, you know, float downstream. Like leaves and stream. I let anything, anything I was feeling, any emotion, anything. It was my opportunity to just, um, whatever came up, man. There was a point where I was feeling sick. I was feeling nauseous. I'm like, you know what? Hold it in, man. I don't know what to tell you. Like, there was a point where I was, my head was hurting. I was like, it, this too shall pass. And you know what? It did. I'm here now. And that was the quickest six hours of my life. Quickest six hours of my life. Still feeling amazing. I thought I was only doing, I thought I was maybe like an hour and a half or two but there was a point where just time wasn't existent there was not a point where i was i was waiting till the end i was simply just coasting i was simply just flowing with the thoughts with my emotions with my sensations of my body i was simply just flowing with whatever came up it was a very very crazy feeling man And then time, at that point, I was, time was not existent. Because time doesn't exist. <laughs> time is subjective. Oh, man. I just had to come on here and talk to somebody. I mean, I don't got anybody to talk to right now. I had to come on here and just kind of spew out some energy of how I was feeling, man. But honestly, words don't do it justice. It really doesn't, man. Words don't do it justice for for long-term meditation. Like I said, you, anybody that watches this, try it out, man. You don't have to go six hours. If you do, that's cool. If you go eight hours, that's even better. 12. If you do 12, please live stream it. I want to see it. <laughs> please let the world know. I mean, it's not about time, though. It's no competition. It's not about proving that you're better than anybody because you can meditate longer than somebody it's not about that whatsoever i wasn't trying to prove a point i was just trying to well i guess i was trying to prove a point but, but i wasn't trying to prove anything about myself i was trying to prove it to you and show you that you can do it too if i can do it i'm just some i'm just some joe schmo bro like i'm not anybody i ain't i'm not a monk I'm just a white guy from the United States of America that watches a few YouTube videos on meditation. And, you know, I like yoga. <laughs> but if I can do it, you can do it, man. And uh, like I said, do it at your own pace. Do, do, uh, do what feels right. Do what feels right. Don't listen to that voice that tells you to Oh, just just cut it out, man. You know, go eat some potato chips. There's, there's another voice. There's another. It's not even a voice. There's another um, connection that you can attain, and uh, you can uh, you know cultivate. You can curate within yourself, and that's the heart connection. That may be your intuition. Listen to that. Feel that. Feel how that feels. And, um, yeah. It'll lead the way. It'll show you the way. Because the way 
is the way, is the way.